Before you run off and build yourself a home server, just stop. There are a few crucial things you need to know beforehand, otherwise your project could quickly end in chaos. Whether you just want to back up your photos, or are you planning a small home network with virtual machines, this video will give you the ultimate overview. We talk about budget, hardware options and answer the big question, is an old office PC enough or do you need more power? So grab a coffee, this is going to be exciting. Before you invest a single cent in hardware, first clarify this one question. What do you need your home server for? This is the basis for everything that follows, because you need very different hardware depending on your purpose. Do you just want secure storage for your holiday photos and videos? Or do you want to stream films and series? Maybe even want to host virtual machines, train AI models or edit 4K videos? Your goal not only determines the hardware, but also the right operating system and software. So think carefully, what should your home server really be able to do? If you have watched this far, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. What is your budget? Now let's get practical. How much money do you want to spend? A home server can cost anything from 50 bucks for a second hand office PC to several thousand euros or bucks for a high end setup. If you only want a simple data storage solution, you can get away really cheaply. For demanding things like visualizations or 4K video editing, you will have to invest more. So set yourself a limit that will help us later when choosing the correct hardware. How long should your server run? Many of you maybe forget this point and pay for it later. Do you want to run your server 24 seven so that you can access your data anytime? Or should it only power up occasionally for backups and file transfers? Here in Europe, a continuous running operation system is a cost killer. The longer your server runs, the more important it is to use energy efficient hardware. Electricity is not for free. Here is a tip. An older office PC can be a clever solution, but not always. It all comes down to the efficiency, so plan in advance how often you really need your server running. Storage is cheap until you suddenly run out. How much space you need depends entirely on your specific purpose. Just backups? A few terabytes on inexpensive HDDs is more than enough. Fast access? SSDs are better for video editing or large files. And the best mix? SSD cache for speed and HDDs for capacity. The best of both worlds. So, does your server need more speed or more storage space? Think carefully, because you can never have enough storage. Now it's getting technical, but also really important. Your network is your home server's data highway. The question is, how much lane width do you need? Simple use, 1 gigabit Ethernet is enough for normal files and backups. But 4K editing video, 1 gigabit Ethernet will slow you down. And a 2.5, 5, 10 or even a 20 gigabit Ethernet solution will be the best option for you. But attention, your switch, router and your PC must also support this feature. So check your hardware beforehand, otherwise the fastest network won't work. And here comes the big question. Do you want your storage set up on the network or directly on the PC or Mac? A NAS or NAS, a network attached storage, is ideal if you want access for multiple devices. It is super flexible for backups, streaming and files. Perfect for virtualizations or VMs with Proxmox or Unraid. A DAS, a direct attached storage, is directly connected to your PC or Mac. The connection here can be Thunderbolt 3, 4 or 5 or USB-C. It is ideal for copying large files or editing 4K video material. But it is less flexible, only one device can access. And here's your decision, do you need flexibility or network access? Your home server stands or falls with the right OS, so choose wisely. There are many options, but which one is the right for you? Maybe Unraid? It is super simple, perfect for media server users. Tuners? Highest data security with ZFS? Or Poxmox? The paradise for VMs? Or Media Vault? Extremely flexible and really easy to use? Or Zima OS? Minimalistic and efficient. And tip, it runs super direct with PCIe Thunderbolt cards. 
What's more important to you? Simple and fast? Then go with Unraid or Open Media World, maximum data security, Trueness or powerful visualizations or VMs, then go with Proxmox. So choose wisely and your server will thank you later. Now it's getting exciting, the hardware. There's a lot to talk about and consider here, so let's go through it step by step. First question, what do you already have at home? Before you go shopping and spend a lot of money, check what hardware you already have. Maybe you have an old PC lying around or a CPU or network card that you can use. For example, I have an i3 of the 4th generation with an ASRock H61M ITX mainboard and even a Dell Optiplex 3010 which are still good for small projects. But beware, older CPUs such as mine or older are hardly worthwhile in my opinion. The power consumption is often too high in relation to the performance. The situation is similar with AMD's AM3 platform. It is not very power efficient and limits you with modern features. If you want to use something old, maybe it's better to start with an Intel of the 6th generation or an AMD Ryzen. It's more or they are more efficient and more future proof. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. The mainboard or motherboard. Details count here. How many SATA ports do you need for your hard drives? Does it support NVMe for fast SSDs? Are there enough free PCIe lanes for graphics, expansions, HPAs or network cards? And maybe you need Thunderbolt. Then you should see if you can upgrade it or if your motherboard offers the feature. The case. How big can it be? How many hard disks should it hold? A compact case like my Silverstone CS351 is cool, but if you want more than 10 drives, you need something bigger. Think about cooling and space. CPU? For simple storage, an i3 or an older Ryzen will do. For VMs or video transcoding, you will need something more powerful. An i5 or 7 or Ryzen 5 or 7. I use an i5 10400F and it does a good job. Here is some help. At this point, you should press pause and take a closer look at the table. It will help you to find the right CPU for your application. However, the table only shows the minimum requirement for your planned application. For example, if you only want to use Home Assistant, then an Intel Celeron N3150 should be ok. Of course, you can always choose a better CPU. Graphics card. Most of the time you don't need one, except for special tasks like 4K transcoding or GPU pass-through in your VM. For example, and this setup is really overkill, I have an Nvidia Quadro P620 in there, but a GT730 or a Radeon R7 275X could also work if you already have them. If your mainboard doesn't have enough SATA ports, an HBA host bus adapter or a PCIe SATA controller is a must. This allows you to easily connect 8 or more drives, perfect for large NAS setups. A good network card is essential for a fast network. My 10GBE Sonnet PCIe Solo makes a huge difference. Consider 2.5, 5 or a 10GBE depending on your needs and your budget. If you want a DAS with Thunderbolt and your motherboard doesn't have it on board, get a card like the Gigabyte Maple Ridge Thunderbolt card, ideal for high speed connections to your MacBook or PC. An extra goodie for you, if you want to copy your old Blu-rays or play media directly, install a drive. Not absolutely necessary, but a cool bonus for media fans. When it comes to hardware, flexibility is key, just use what you have. If your budget is small or you only need basic functions, a second-hand office PC such as a Dell, HP or a Novo for 50 or 100 bucks could be enough. Perfect for simple data storage or storing photos and energy saving too. Let's summarize the whole thing again. First, purpose. What's your purpose? What do you need the server for? Budget. How much do you want to spend? Power consumption. Will it run 24 7 or only sometimes? Storage space. More capacity or more speed? 
network. Is 1 GBE enough or do you need more power? NAS or DAS? Flexibility versus speed and operating system. Unraid, TrueNAS, Proxmox or whatever. Maybe the most important rule. You don't always need the most expensive. An old office PC can often work wonders. Unfortunately, I wasted a lot of time and afford just building a server instead of focusing more on my needs. Did this video help you? Then give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more tech tips. Do you have any questions? Write them in the comments. I will be happy to help you. See you in the next video.